sitting on my desk that I couldn't get to because we were growing, like growing up. Like, and I just, I just said, call all of them back and tell them forty dollars. Like I don't even know. I don't care. Just do it. We did. We couldn't even get to them. Right? And I didn't have enough people to do it. I couldn't get out there in the field. And so I just, I mean, I just lost that business because I wasn't ready for it. And sometimes that happens. You know, if it happens where you're just like getting hit and hit and hit and it can't. And then, you know, there's other times where maybe you can set into cruise control and be like, this is just where we're going to sit. You know, Brad always used to say, hey, look, if you're not growing, you're dying. And you're, inevitably, you're going to grow. And I was quoting him who quoted others. Well, in the future, it's also not set in stone. You know, so, so you can, you know, you can have a goal one year, change that the next year, and, you know, let's have, and you're ready. you know, yeah, we're ready now, let's have banner growth, and, okay, maybe let's cool off a little bit, maybe not as much, and, you know, you have a little bit of control of that, but not total control of that, but you always. I by myself, so I had a presentation. What would you do with the next item? What would you do? Front office. Yep. Front office. In order to put a third truck in the field, you yeah. usually need an office person. You need somebody yeah. answering yeah. the phones all the time. Yeah. There, there's two things I know. That's, That's all. it. I don't There's no one in <laughs> And he's used them up today. <laughs> that hurt my feelings. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> well, the other one still hurt from before. It's, 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 uh, it's wrapped up. Because you're here, I know that all of you are going to grow and all of you are going to be faced with this decision at some point in your business whether or not you need to grow past, you have to grow past one person or you want to, to, to go uh, and just continue to be what this is. It's not going to be where you, you are your master, the master of your domain in respect to that. Someday, something's going to happen. You're going to have a landscaper call you because you've done good work. And because you're here, I know this. You do good work. You want to do better work than everybody else. Your phone's going to ring, and there's going to be 100 customers right there at your fingertips, and all you have to do is put another truck in the field because you're at max capacity. And that's a decision you're all going to have to make at some point. And when you do, I want you to call me and say something that, and I have these in my calendar. Every year I get reminders on a half a dozen. It's, it's up to eight or nine now. Eight or, eight or nine days a year. One calendar calendar reminder pops up, up on my calendar that says, John said Brad was right. <laughs> 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 True. And he reminds me. And I don't even remember what he was right about. Oh, he reminds me every year. It's on the calendar, man. Tom said Brad was right about this. Tom said Brad was right about that. And he'll call me every now and then and say, you're going to have to put another mark on your calendar. And I said, what was I right about this time? Because you're going to be faced with this. And there are going to be points in your growth where it it doesn't cost you money to grow. It just costs you a little bit of pain and, 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 and the growing pains. There are going to be points, and that second to third truck is where you have to take, is one place where you have to take a financial step backward to be able to take two steps forward down the road. Hiring a person that is not driving revenue takes money away from you, the owner operator, until you can have that revenue fulfilled by, another, by, by that third vehicle. That, that, is, that is constant with everybody on the phone. And one thing, I know more pest control people than I do lawn care because pest control folks tend to share more in meetings like this as their own meetings like this. But I've got two very good friends. One of them has See about you two rushing. counts and the other one has about 1,500 counts. That's where they're staying. They're happy at that level. They're happy at that income. And they both have their numbers down to where they know they have about a 5 or 6% cancellation rate each year. And they know how many leads they're going to get. And they know what they're going to sell. And they fire that bottom percentage of their customer base here. And we've all got them. There's a nightmare schedule, complain about every little thing. These guys go in and they target at the end of the year and they say, I want to stay at this number. I'm going to add 100 in sales. I'm firing my bottom 100 customers. And they're continually cycling through their customer base. And they're just giving those people price increases to where, you know what, for that much money, I'll put up with you. And most of the time they end up moving on or they end up. You know, get a better attitude about it and they end up keeping us a profitable customer but these two guys make a good living they're both very happy where they're at 
and that's their process. They know exactly what their cancellation is going to be. They know what they're going to sell, and that percentage of their customer base is what they they fire them every year. They get rid of the ones that drive them crazy, and it's it makes for a very smooth life. That's a good healthy model. Yeah, it is a good healthy model. You know, I had just for me um, personally, and how I looked at this business and growing it, it, it wasn't about growing fast at, at any given point. In fact, it was about hiding for a long time because I wanted to make sure that what we were doing, uh, the products that we were putting out, and the time was behind it before we stepped out into the spotlight because it was better to not come in loud with guns blazing with all of this stuff and then be swallowed up by a bigger fish. You know, we wanted to have everything in place before anybody really knew who we were. So that was that was my goal. And now while I could have said I would have liked it to grow faster, it always grew, right? But it was quiet and we kind of kept it back there and so that we can go back and say, yeah, we have 10 years of 15 years of data. We have this many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of lawns that have done this. Here's the way this works. We've got this process down. It's not just we woke up one day and said we're a fertilizer company, right? And so for me, that was that was actually very tactical. We kind of had this model where we we're feeding it into a group that we created to be very core, very like family oriented, and helped with their businesses and talked about everything about it. And then it was sort of caught fire, right? Because we were ready and we've been prepping for it. I mean, when we bought that building in 2013. Uh, all of our stuff fit in like that corner over there, you know, and it was in this big empty space and we had these two corporate transport vehicles that were razor scooters so that we could go from one end of the building to the other back and forth because all of our stuff was on one end and we kept forgetting stuff on the back end and we had to scoot back and forth across this thing because we weren't to the size to fill that space, but we knew it was coming, right? We're prepping for that. We knew that time was going to happen. And we would buy equipment when we didn't need it, and we'd sit on it. Like there were things when I would see something happen, I know we're going to need that. It's coming next year. Let's make sure we're not in a pickle when it happens. And I planned ahead that way. So we're always bringing things in all the time to be ready for that time. Then it was like I made the commitment. I said, you know, I was like, what, four years ago or so, five years ago, I said, I'm just going to be now out talking about this and get as much exposure, as much exposure as possible. That was my goal. Just talk about it, be out get as many speaking engagements as I possibly could, be out in the public, finally put a face out there in front of it, and then we started making all these other connections and it just went like that, right? Everything jumped up and then all of a sudden, here's this company, who are they? Few early adopters take it on, they share the fire, everything starts going, right? We grew 450% last year. 417 percent 417. 2018 was 417 percent of 2017. 2019 was 145 uh, percent of 2018. It's, it's been a lot, big, big, huge steps as we've gone forward. But we're ready, and, and we can take it. And this is one of those pain points that I was talking. It's a good illustration of the pain point. Um, show of hands here. Who, who all here was I your first rep that you spoke with in this company? I'm surprised not more than that. It's unusual. Um, until this year, I was the primary rep. You know, we had, we've had a couple people in Florida off and on. Um, Chris Helms came on board this year. And, the guy and, northern the border for a while. I'm sorry? The guy northern border. Hand of the mic? Okay, yeah, that was a hot minute. That, that was, was yeah, a hot minute. Um, um, started, right? we're, we're point, we, 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 and this year, this year was especially painful for me. Um, <laughs> In, in, in a number of ways, but it was, a, it was a good pain. It was a pain I was happy to feel. But Chris helped me bear it uh, quite a bit. And, and, and what we, the struggle was, you know, we, we need to scale our sales force. We need, we need to scale our, our account rep team. And our commitment That's Chris. to the, our company culture and our company identity requires them not be a say anything salesperson. It's not somebody that's just it's going to be an FH, and we'll tell you what that is later, one on one, if you'd like. Um, we we need someone, and we, we want people on our sales team that understand our products and have used our products, that have the same level of commitment to feeding, helping you feed your families that John and I have had since the beginning of all of this, because it's our it's our core value of the company. It's it is it is I would say it is the single biggest core value of our company. And that's our commitment to you. So if I ever put, her, if I ever assign you to a rep, 
and they don't treat you like that, and they don't find out everything they could possibly find out about your fertility program so that they can help us be what you need us to be, I want to call. That's the wrong person. Chris is the right kind of guy. Bo is the right kind of guy. Josh is the right kind of guy. And we're very happy about, about all of this. And we're going to continue to scale the sales team. We're going to continue to up our game on the education because that's what we want to be for you guys. Because that's the plan. Because that's the plan that we set. And, you know, we, we've gotten, we have gotten past that, the pain point. What do we got? Oh, Mark Long. Yeah, I forgot about Mark. Well, you know, he's, he's got one foot in the grave and the other on a bar, so, well. Uh, Remember, he has the most you know, well, experience. I was talking about this year. You are just now coming on as a sales rep. I tried to get you to become a sales rep a year and a half ago, and you said, quote, I'm not ready yet. I still have a spray service. I have to get rid of it first. That's right, Hunter. Yeah, that's right. So, as of last week, Hunter became our Florida sales rep, our Florida account rep. Oh, look at that. Woo! He has been with us in one way, shape, or another since he was, what, four years old? But yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's been a long time. So okay. between, I mean, when you think about how long Mark's been in the business, it's, it's like six times more than Hunter's been alive. Mark has clothes that are older than Hunter that he still wears. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> exactly. He's wearing them today. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, the point of that, if there is one, is that there's an awful lot of experience that could be shared in all sorts of, you know, as you're growing your business and moving things along, and that we, we, we want to offer that. You know, we want to be able to share that with you in our, our own trials and tribulations, and, you know, these are a bunch of people who, who ran spray services and pulled hoses, and we've been there and done the whole thing. So, you know, it's not, we're not just, you now that I'm sort of just talking about Green County, we're not just a fertilizer company. You now we, we were boots on the ground first, right? So there's, there's more. There's a lot that you can lean into on this side. And we're, we're here, we're here. Maybe it's just telling a story or, or just, you know, sharing and helping you through a little pain point in your company. Um, it's, it's like the first person in your peer group that is, is, is us, right? And then you get to build the rest of it get some more people in there and be able to share and, and grow your business. I know it's counterintuitive to what you're used to experiencing from suppliers, but we really give it our And I'm sorry that I forgot about this thing. I already talked a little bit out of the back. Curmudgeon <laughs> <laughs> battle 2020. <laughs> 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 All right. Did, any, anything else anybody wants to throw at? Any questions? Yes. Yeah, anyone besides him. This yeah. is Patty O'Brien. This is gentleman, so he's uh, he's uh, Yes, ma'am. They both got there the hard way by managing more people, dealing with more nonsense than either one of them wanted to do. And the more customers go up, the more nonsense goes up. And they both got to that point where they said, I don't, and I, I forget the guy's name. I should remember, he was in Florida. Met him years and years ago, but he was like the first guy that I never heard, like it just never occurred to me. I worked for a guy, Don Jameson, that was always grow, 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 grow. The thought of going backwards, it was just that's like the craziest thing in the world. It never occurred to me that that was even an option. And the guy in Florida was like, this is crazy. Why am I doing this? And he got rid of a bunch of customers he didn't like dealing with. He got rid of his whole commercial business. He scaled back. And these guys met him, and they were talking to him. They were both like, this is nuts. Why am I doing this? I don't need, I'm at a point in my life where I don't need. And these, I mean, they're not old. I hope they're not old at my age. But they're, you know, at that point, they're like, you know, I've got other things I want to do. Stuff doesn't impress me anymore. I want time more than I want money. So I've got enough money to pay my bills, do the things I want to do. I've got reliable people. I can take really good care of these few people. They've got great jobs. Everybody's happy. I just don't need a bunch of nonsense. But they got there the hard way by going past that point and realizing, yeah, I need to bring it back. And that's what they both did. They both got rid of their customers. They didn't. They, the, specifically, they both got rid of commercial pest control. 
because that was just a nightmare of management. And then they kept their checks that they were their highest quality people, and they just pulled it back in. It's a pain versus profit ratio. No, you're talking the right person. My entire lawn care business was the dregs, as far as I was concerned. I mean, I, I wanted out of lawn care. I, it's a long, complicated story, but I was forced into lawn care because we have non-competing pest control with my current partner, and we couldn't get back into it. So I had to do it, and my full intention was, I'm going to do this long enough until I get pest control built up to this number and the lawn care is gone and we're full bore pest control, termite pest control. That was four years ago. <coughs> I went to a Rivering conference, listened to one of his talks, what is that, one year? Three years ago. No, okay, three years ago. And I listened to one of John's talks and I thought, man, this guy's saying stuff that, you know, I've been wanting to hear because I've never heard anybody approach it this way. That changed everything for us. So. We, like I've never, like we don't advertise lawn care. I don't promote lawn care. It was just, if, if it grows more, then it's just gonna be more people get paid the butt. For the last three years, we've specifically gone out and tried to grow that. We shot a television commercial and kind of swarm we never did. We've made an intentional developmental goal <clears throat> on lawn care. But again, I'm doing that same thing with my lawn care. If I'm going through the end of the year, I'm running a report to see how many service calls people are having. If there's something really legit going on at the yard, then we're stepping that up in our service here. Like, what do we have to do to make sure we're at this this year? If they're just one of those people, price increase. And it's, you know, you can call it upcycling or recycling or get rid of whatever, but the bottom fire five or ten percent gets a price increase. Firing, firing customers. You, know you can what? fire your customers. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. They'll problem. fire you. You can fire them. Yeah. yeah. This just is not working out. I think you'd be better off with somebody else and just no. get them out there. We used to label them <laughs> rotten rot pumpkins. Yeah. So we said if, if we had a customer that we just did not like, was, was not understanding the expectations of, a, of a, how long it's going to take or, or what's going on. We, we would just put a flag code. I mean, Real Green calls it a flag code on their services and has another word for it. But we would just rotten pumpkin. And then every year, we'd run through that, run that report, get all the rotten pumpkins, and say, we're not working for them anymore. Or, like you said, <coughs> price increase. And if you want to pay this, you can stick around. If not, you're gone. Was it a percentage? <coughs> No, no, because it, it would vary from year to year. Um, some years it was a couple. Some years it was twenty or thirty. Um, we've had some. We had some flag codes in there that I can't say out loud. <laughs> Pitas, like Pita Pit. Pita Pit. Pita Pit. Pita Pit. Oh, Pitas is a very popular flag code. I don't know if that. We have a frowning face. Frowning we face. Put emoji. Yeah, nice. We have an emoji frowning face. Aww. <laughs> but it, it just, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it for our tax to spend that extra 30 minutes at, at Mrs. Jones' property because she just doesn't get it. Um, and to add to that, I mean, it's a case-by-case it's case basis. You have to really look at the account and look at the individual and see, you know, because the one thing that you don't want to do is fire a customer, get rid of a customer, jack up their price when there were some failures within you know, the service that they were getting. You know, if you start doing that, that can give you a bad reputation about it. You really got to look at it like, okay, yeah, this person calls in after every single treatment, you know, spends a half hour on the phone complaining about nothing, and then hanging up the phone and calling back a week later with, with no real problems. Like, okay, that person's a pain in the ass. But, you know, if the tech goes out there every single time and leaves the gate open and the customer calls in and says, hey, you guys left the gate open again and screams at you for 20 minutes every time you do it, I mean, you could fire that customer, but, you know, you really was a failure within the, you know, within the company there. So, you know, you really have to look, you really have to look at those things as well. And when we lose customers and we can't, you know, customers cancel us, we always do an internal audit to see like what what could we have done to save that customer? Did we do everything in our power? Did we live up to their expectations? Did we set the right expectations? Um, you know, and you really have to do that with with um, you know even the customers that you want to get rid of, just to make sure that you're getting rid of the customer for the right reasons. So 
just just to revisit something we originally talked about on Wednesday, Wednesday night um, when it comes to hiring folks and retaining people. At what point do you, in revenue can a company realistically afford to give benefits? When I know big companies have bigger budgets for revenue. When they, if you all have <laughs> I don't really want to, I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, you've got to look at it from a point of not necessarily what revenue you're at, but where your costs are, you know, and, and, and see where there's things. There's things so out there for small businesses that can help you along the way. Um, you know, uh, ADP, for example, they're, uh, you know, they do payroll, but they have a lot of services that they offer that go above and beyond that. They have retirement plans. They have uh, health healthcare plans and stuff like that that they can probably get better rates for you than you could go out by contacting, you know, uh, Kaiser Permanente or, or United Healthcare or whoever. They can probably get some more competitive rates that may make it, you know, more affordable to offer that to somebody. And you, you got to look at it and see if it's built into your pricing structure, the revenue that you have coming in. And, and that's gonna change because, you know, if you're in a, in a high rent area where, you know, your building is costing you tons of money, you know, it's better. through an area where, you know, the cost of commercial real estate is, is not that much, you might have a little bit more to play with than, than somebody. It, it all depends on the cost of, of that individual you know, company. I think it's the same concept when you're talking about insurance as, as what we're talking about, finding somebody that knows what they're talking Whatever about. Whatever you contract, say, big A. That's what she does. She sells uh, health insurance to small businesses just like everybody here. And when we, Andrew, when our old insurance company, our old insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it to you. You are? No. Uh, so our old insurance company, when, when a, one of our employees would have a problem or a question, they were very unresponsive. Um, it, it took multiple emails, multiple phone calls. So my wife came into Andrews Law Landscaping and, and kind of revamped how we deal with the insurance thing. So my recommendation on that is definitely find someone that will is willing to come to your shop and have an hour conversation with you about how to handle insurance. That, that, that's usually the best way. My wife loves doing it. She makes up little packets, little little information packets, how, how your employees sign up, how they how they sign up for dental or, or uh, vision or, or medical. And, and she, she, she takes it by the bull by the horns when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of resources out there. You know, and, and just try to find them and see if, they, see if they fit what you want to offer and what you want to do. I mean, and see what people in the area with the bigger companies that are there, see what they're offering. See if you can compete with that. It might be a little bit different, you know, but it can be the same. Like we don't we don't offer a 401k. We offer, you know, a simple plan. It's still a retirement plan, it still has the same things and everything like that, you know, but we're not at the level where we can offer, you know, a 401k through our company. And my wife sells nationwide, so if you guys have any questions, <laughs> just get my phone number and I'll make sure she gets in contact with you. Yeah, Aiden, that's Brad. All right, we got, yes. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Uh, for the guys that have uh, grown their businesses to, you know, in the thousands of customers in a relatively short period of time, you know, five years or so, like Chris and, you know, Pat and uh, Kendall and different people in the room, uh, what did that growth uh, what does that growth look like, like throughout the years, those, those years? Was it pretty consistent, like maybe you, you know, doubled your customer base every year? I mean, what does that look like? And is there a certain number of customers where it starts to get momentum on its own, where, you know, where it starts to take off? Anybody? I'll tell you about the momentum when I get there. I don't feel like we have that yet. Um, we just really started advertising that part of our company. We were probably 500 or so customers three years ago, so I guess we've added 500 a year net for the last three years is what it's boiled down to. Um, I don't think we were really there with the momentum. Uh, we advertise on radio and TV 
which again, it's a market by market thing. I've got a friend in Nashville who his advertising budget last year was $135. He bought a little thing in his daughter's school program, and his company's grown 20%. We're spending seven percent of our total revenue on advertising and fighting like crazy to grow. Yeah, and danger. He's right there. It just depends on. I've got a friend in Baltimore. He just can't believe he's the man. TV. He's right between Baltimore and Washington D.C. And there's no way they can afford TV time there. So the fact that we're on TV is just you know, oh, it's just fine. So it's from market to market. But you know, my goal has been we've added a truck and a guy every year. And I expect that same growth to continue. So that's kind of what I'm planning for. I'd love to be wrong. I'd love to be back on the truck myself and, and spraying again to stay caught up. But that's the way it's worked out so far for the last three years anyway. That's, that's about we, where we were at for five years is a, a truck and a half almost every year. So that's but I'm bad. thinking anywhere from three to 400 customers. Now there was a couple of years ago, we, we were up in the 600s one year. And it was a great year. Um, Last year was a little bit of a struggle. We were around 350. So it, it really depends on the market, who's looking for stuff, um, what landscapers or people in your area drop off to. Um, that, that year that we did 600, we had a local competitor that just said, I'm done. And so we must have got maybe 100, 125 customers just from him leaving the area. Kendall, do you have anything? Yeah, I just uh, on the So our solution to that was we we would hold more money. So if your insurance was $100 a month, um, we would hold $125 <laughs> or $150, and we would cover that employee for those three months. So, Correct. So they have full year of benefits. They never go off the benefits. They don't have to worry about it. No, no one has good benefits. So let's be very clear about that. Um, my wife, who works for an insurance company, uh, we paid out eight thousand dollars last year in in for health insurance. Um, so that's just me, my wife, and my two kids. Um, that's before we hit our deductible. So it was. Um, no one has good in health insurance, but like I said, if you find someone that really knows what they're talking about. Um, their insurance, just like anything else, they can shop around and find the best plan for you. Um, but that always worked for us with our employees was take a little bit extra out each month or each paycheck, and then you can cover them. Some guys decline that, and they would go on. Um, Give me a second, Aiden. No, 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 Cobra. You can, you know, the Cobra is an option, but you know, some guys want to do that because they wanted the, all the money in their paycheck. But the smart guy said, "No, nah, just take the thirty-two dollars extra out of my paycheck and cover me all year." John, can you please tell Aiden where he can get a hat? Oh, Aiden, come on, bro. <laughs> uh, Deidre, I'll get you one. Deidre, get Aiden a hat. Okay. I knew you were going to ask me. Is he there right now? Yeah, he's right there. Stop asking for things. <laughs> I'll get you a hat, Aiden. I don't even know you. Yeah, yeah he will. Anybody want to give Aiden a hat, he will wear it on his YouTube channel. He's a good <laughs> kid. Hey, everybody, hey, Jake, pick that up and have everybody say hi to Aiden real quick. Say, say hi to Aiden. Hi. We wish you were here, buddy. <laughs> All right, thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. Does anybody else ha have any other questions? Yes. Comments? Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Uh, for Chris, uh, what was Go Green covering on the health insurance? What, like, their percentage of the policy? 50%. 50%? Okay. Yeah, that's what we do as well, 50%. We offer, we actually offer three levels. Um, for three different plans, I shouldn't say levels, but three different plans that they get to choose from. Um, one of them, you know, kind of like you were saying, like one's, a, one's just like a standard like HMO plan, you know, no out-of-pocket expenses, um, and uh, for like a regular visit and stuff like that. And one is like a higher, like PPO plan, and one's kind of like a middle, you know, middle of the level plan. But that's what we do. You know, our season is roughly about ten months long, you know, and so. For those guys, what we do is just we cover half of it, you know. But it's not, you know, it's four hundred dollars a month. We're paying two hundred. They're paying two hundred. We do that for our um, 
uh, full-time employees year-round, but we just figure out what the number is to cover those two months that they're not employed, and, and it's just part of, of how it goes. So they might be end up paying like two hundred and sixty dollars a month, and we'll only pay a hundred and you know one hundred and forty. But then we're picking up those two months is all on us. So you can also offer AFLAC, things like that. that that's no cost to you as, as the owner. Is there a situation arises where you're, you're taking too much money out of their paycheck to cover the off-season months and that employee leaves in September or October and not to return to work for you and you're already holding their insurance money to cover them? You well, I mean, once they leave, then they're not an employee anymore, so. Yeah, they they're, gave they're you too much money and then they leave? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to So, uh, so we act, so we do hourly. Uh, plus, we do uh, uh, production bonus, sales commission, uh, and then we have other bonuses that are tied in that are more company. Say hi to Aiden. Um, you know, if the company gets certain goals from a production standpoint, from a sales standpoint, from a customer retention standpoint. Um, we do for uh, getting reviews. We'll do like uh, we call it tip attack. Where that's all you know, I can do for you, buddy. Yeah, I stole that. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that smart enough to think of these things. But uh, but yeah, so they'll get you know they'll get talks for a review, walk up leads. We really try to heavily incentivize those. 